Hello and welcome to the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Series live on Apex Racing TV. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick and alongside me is Daniel Leach. Scott Newton operating the cameras tonight and we're here at one of the most legendary circuits in the world. It is Suzuka. Uh, Daniel, this is one of my all-time favourites. I love to race around this place. We usually get some very good events around here as well. Um, should be in for a nice uh, one-hour, 30-minute race tonight for our first jury of the season. Yeah, good evening, Sam, and all of you, the viewers tuning in. Great to have you back aboard for the first endurance round of the new season. Uh, I'm a little on the fence. It's a okay circuit. I've never had much success around here. There's, there's some very nice corners, especially through that first phase, but I just struggle to, to link a lap around this place. I will just point out that Daniel also likes um, seeping, so he's got no taste. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't value anything that comes out of his mouth. Uh, this place is exceptional, and, and, and that's a fact. But anyway, well, but we've got 90 minutes to discuss the quality of this circuit. We're currently in a 10-minute practice session and uh, two splits tonight and we'll be 35 drivers in this top split. Apologies for a little delay uh, going live tonight, but uh, everything should be resolved. And like we have already said, uh, first endurance meeting of the season, one hour, 30 minutes compared to the normal 45 minutes of racing that we have will be in store. Uh, so far this season, Daniel, uh, Ross Rizzo is the championship leader. He's got a couple of podiums already under his belt. He got a win back at Daytona. He hasn't been quite as dominant as he was last season. Recall when he won, I think it was six races in a row and, and he just seems to have a pace advantage on everyone. If anything, he hasn't been the fastest driver on track in either of the last two races, but that consistency that he's grown so accustomed to has really helped him out in the points. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Ross has always been a very consistent driver, whether it be in this championship or, or other series as well. And uh, the ability to just continue to rack up those points is ultimately what gets you that the championship victory at the end. I mean, admittedly, yes, he also took a huge amount of wins last season, but um, consistency is key. I mean, you, you can't get those wins without the consistency. And, and, you know, for this season already, we've got some regular contenders up towards the pointy end, as well as a few new ones. Uh, getting in there and it's good to see that little bit of variety and it, I think it's only going to help all these drivers develop and more um, as they work their way through. Ross is certainly in for a good position at the moment just looking on the timing and scoring currently with the quickest lap out of the field but yeah the regular contenders are still there. Nathan Huppert is up there, Tom Huggins still hang hanging around there, Chris Weitzel's up there. Um, so it's going to present a really interesting challenge especially over the uh, hour and a half that we're going to be here tonight. I think Rizzo won the last time that we visited this circuit. It was a bit of a uh, bit of a crazy one because of the um, because of the uh, virtual safety cars that we had, and I think uh, half the field got drive the penalties, and it really messed up the order. I think Rizzo ended up winning. Uh, that was kind of before he won the title. So the fact that he's on pole position here is very good news for him. The car number one on pole position, Danny Davidson lines up in second place. Then it is uh, Nathan Hartpert, Ben Dahl, James Glaspool, who was uh, very good uh, in the uh, first couple of rounds. Uh, Chris Whitesall starts in sixth. Then it is Tom Hagen, Rob Bowden, Mitchell Bales, top of the amateur drivers, and Ashley Collins rounding out the top ten. Then Steve Janssen in 11th place, Adrian Block, Brenton Hawkins, uh, Paul Warwick, Aaron Cooper, Adam Hughes, Bradley Sanders, Scott Forsyth, Chris Barnes, Simon Mazomo, good to see Simon out there, uh, Shane Bowen in 21st, it's Rob Harris, uh, Kobe Laszlo, Ben Henniker, Todd George, Tim uh, Himbury, Adam Simpson, Michael Schroeder, Brock Kramer, Alexander Newton, uh, Javan Wood, Brenton Ball, Chris Keeping, Lee Kogan, and Michael Fazari rounding out the order. A uh, short pace uh, corners around the circuit. Just going, uh, just, just starting our launch before uh, one thirty up, and then I've got the chicane to negotiate, and then that long run down into turn one. Certainly, the possibility for plenty of change there, and it can get quite messy going through the S's for the first time up into Dunlop Curve. But it's Ross Rizzo, as he has become accustomed to, to 
uh, choose when we launch this race. The pace car is in and the field is under Vizier's control. He puts his foot down and we are away racing here for 90 minutes of action go, at go, Suzuka. Go, and Vizier sprints away from the rest of the order straight away. Davidson tries to cover up the rest of the dress. He's done a pretty good job at it. And he should be able to stay in second place going into turn one. Still Hopper's trying to make a bit of a challenge on him. Single file for much of the order as the field goes rather gingerly down into turn one. One, and it does mean that there's not been too much change. Simon Mazzone up three places, the biggest biggest changer I can see so far out there. As uh, yeah, he's up into 17th place, so nice start for him. Adam Hughes starts uh, from the pits, I believe, down 20 places, but uh, that was all quite pedestrian, I thought. There, Daniel, nice job from the drivers. Yeah, definitely, it was a really good start from all involved. No one really getting out of out of whack and, and causing any major issues. It uh, did play nicely into the hands of Ross Rizzo. He's already getting himself a nine-tenths of a second advantage over uh, Danny Davison as we see Mazomo out wide through the double left, uh, double right-hander there, and that's an easy spot for those drivers to uh, have a little bit of a moment, especially early on with the cold tyres. But everyone else doing very well here. A couple of little passes down into the first hairpin, and uh, all in all, feel doing uh, quite nicely as we got one car off in the uh, the wall there under the bridge. That's Shane Bowen. So not sure what's happened to him there. He does have to tow back to the pits, then maybe we could get a safety car. Haven't seen one so far this season. We will see what the uh, organised thing. I, I, I do believe actually we've got a safety car available. I, I'm not 100% sure, however, as we've got Janssen off the circuit. Janssen qualified all right up in 11th place, but he's down to 19th now running that uh, Corvette C8. He saw the straight line speed he can get now in order to not lose another place to, uh, to, to Kobe Laszlo. As also we've got a car off on the inside, it's Chris Whitesell and another lockup as well for Rob Bowden. He's having to go onto the gravel there as Bowden. So it's got a bit chaotic in the second half of the lap. Lasley did manage to get past Janssen eventually, so and that's a good move for him. Although uh, Forsyth now is dropping down the order just below these guys. I think maybe picking up a slowdown. We've also got side by side with Glasspool and Huggen. And that is Huggen trying to get past uh, and he has been able to do that nice move there from Tom Huggen he's uh, had a couple of good results so far this season he is ahead of uh, James Gaspar up into fifth place yeah nice move down in the inside we'll expect to see a lot of the guys looking at that run down through the, the, the double left double right sorry down in through turn one and two to try and make those moves you can carry a huge amount of momentum just making sure you can get it pulled up and rotate it back around on itself uh, to get through there nicely. But uh, for Tom, uh, doing quite handy at the moment, gaining already two spots off the jump. So uh, the car looking very handy for him at the moment. But he's not going to get it easy with Glasspool right in behind. And uh, this will be a tricky one to see. We might also see Mitchell Bales just behind uh, look to close up and turn this into a bit of a three-car fight as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Bell's putting uh, a decent amount of pressure on these uh, on these guys. Uh, so if they uh, yeah keep on fighting, then they could be in with a chance a little bit wide for Collins, just running behind, going through speed, as we'll see plenty of times in this race, I'm sure. Um, really close right now between well, pretty much everyone from Hawkins down. I just in a queue. And there's a decent amount of towing around this circuit. There's a bit of turbulent now, of course, with the uh, long corners that we have around this circuit. But it is probably an advantage to be behind another driver. You can save a bit of fuel as well. Two pit stops tonight. Uh, one of the pit stops, you've got to take tyres on. Uh, one of the pit stops, you can literally just like come to a halt and, and that's so you don't have to take fuel or, or tyres. But uh, expect the drivers. Well, it'll be interesting because last season that was a massive success story for Ross Rizzo, was, wasn't it, Daniel? With, where he kind of enabled the, um, the, the I, I can't even recall exactly what it was, but he, he would uh, call that Barber. He pitted twice under the first safety car. So he pitted on his in-lap for tyres and then, oh, he pitted on the first lap for tyres and then he pitted on the second lap just to get that second pit stop done. And it worked a cheap point because he pretty much got a free pit stop involved in that one. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he can uh, pull off another strategic master stroke just like that tonight. 
Yeah, definitely. And I mean, let's not forget, he, he was trying that strategy a couple of times over last season as well, most notably the first event, which was an endurance round at Donington. Um, it didn't quite work out for him there, but uh, it certainly set up what we saw throughout the remainder of the season. And you know, we had seen um, a couple of seasons prior to that guys really attempt to do that admittedly not under a safety car but it didn't really pay dividends in the way that it did for Ross that time out so look for that potentially with the safety car if it does come out and whether or not the guys are able to take advantage of it as we have a look here with Adam Simpson to jump on board the uh, the Ferrari and he's hunting down Ben Hanneker uh, at the moment just got pretty good up on the back there through the S's and over the top of the, the crest but just falling off a little bit and he's going to suck right back in so work their way through 130R and Harris out on the outside of the track there. Yeah, where was Harris previously? I think he was in the top 15 was, uh, was Harris, so that is a shame for him. Here comes the replay, and it's all going to be by himself, it looks like. Turns in to uh, Spoon, does he dip it? Oh, I did that so many times in the uh, IR01 during week 13. Easy to see that, that kerb is, uh, yeah. Uh, he, he kind of just dipped a wheel on it. It didn't, didn't quite kind of go over the top of the kerb, which uh, can really unsettle the car, but just losing uh, grip on the outside tyre right there. Uh, Davidson struggling to keep up with Rizzo right now. That last lap, the gap increased by half a second. We are hoping that uh, someone can battle Ross Rizzo tonight. And certainly, if we get a safety car, it could make this race a bit more open. But Rizzo is easing away from the rest of the order, looking very good in that Ford GT. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting the Ford to have such an advantage out here. I thought uh, it certainly would have been favourite for maybe the C8 or, um, or or the Porsche there. But Ross finding everything that he needs to to, to continue to gain it. Just look down through the bottom there. Took uh, that initial nine tenths on the opening lap, and he's taken between three and half a second on the successive laps. So the car in good form at the moment. Maybe Davison trying to save a little bit of fuel, get those tyres up into the rhythm that he needs, and then pressing on. Let's not forget a few of these guys also backing up earlier on uh, from a Bathurst 12-hour event that was run here in Australia. So some very tired drivers out there as well, trying to work their way through uh, for this hour and a half as well. Janssen uh, with a overtake here on Kobe Laszlo. Has to go to the outside into the right hand. That can be tricky because uh, you're paying a lot of faith in your rival, a lot of Neko contact as well would uh, be disastrous in that situation. But Janssen with a nice move after that off, remember, earlier on. Uh, it took him a couple of laps actually to get back past Lazo. I'm surprised it took him that long, but uh, he's got it done now and he can still get some good points out here tonight. Could Steve Janssen, uh, Hawkins with uh, a big queue of cars behind it. I think he got past Warwick a couple of laps ago. He is up three places from his start, is uh, Brenton Hawkins at the moment, but he's going to have to get defensive on what going into turn one. Or maybe it'll just be alright, in fact, because it's not much of a breaking area in Z1. And uh, yeah, Hawkins uh, stays clear of his rival at the moment. But yeah, this one is really close back to Chris Barnes with 14th place. Now he could have a bit of side by side. That was a half hearts to move there from Warwick, would have been very ambitious to go down the inside there. He does look faster, just seems to be able to turn in the car that bit more, using a lot of steering lock as well. I mean, that's over 90 degrees of steering lock into uh, some of these corners. Might start eating up the tyres a bit, but uh, as long as he gets past, that'll be his main concern. Oh, yeah, and that uh, extra lock that he's having to apply, that's definitely going to be due to the uh, the arrow wash from that car in front. So the sooner he can clear and, and press on, uh, that'll get him back into normal stead and help actually ultimately save those tyres a little bit more. See if he goes down the inside into the hairpin, not quite able to do it. Hawkins will pull a weight to that move and just close the door ever so slightly. But uh, Warwick really intent on trying to push through. And the Porsche definitely at the moment seemed to be the slightly quicker car of the two. I mean, Hawkins has done well to get this far up. It's uh, really interesting to see this, but we don't usually see really a, a driver quite so out of position, and yet the overtaking is, is very tricky. Uh, often in this situation, we kind of just see everyone storm, but oh, one driver get past, and then everyone else just follows through on after when we have the reverse grid races um, in, uh, in, in various leagues we broadcast on Apex Racing TV. But 
Uh, Hawkins looks quite a bit slower, and yet he uh, is doing enough at the moment. Maybe that Ferrari as well, maybe a bit more straight on speed. He's gone defensive into the chicane. Better line than he took on the last lap, though, so he might have a good exit. Although uh, Walker's throughout his time, I think he is maybe a half a tenth closer than he was the last time round. Cooper's struggling to keep up with these guys a little bit. You can just see his drops about six tenths of a second behind. The likes of uh, Janssen are going to get involved in this one. He's just appending to the back of this train. Here comes Scott Forsyth down the inside. Nice move. Not much of a defence put up by Himbury on that occasion. So Forsyth now just one place down from where he started. Yeah, and Paul Forsyth also recovering from that earlier slowdown on lap one. So uh, getting back on with business. Simon Mazomo will be the next contender just a little further up in the BMW. So should be able to see that gap closed down. And just keeping an eye on that Hawkins battle we were watching before, the pace has really sort of dropped off a little bit for those guys there, really losing the gap to the, the train in front. As we say that, Hawkins actually pulled a little bit of a margin now over Warwick, who's now got Aaron all over, or Cooper all over the back of him. And uh, Brad Saunders closing in on this little fight as well. But uh, Hawkins so far has been able to withhold the pressure. Apologies if uh, we're not showing too much of the other bats going on, but this one is uh, the best one out on the track at the moment, and I feel like it's going to ignite any any moment uh, because they are all holding station uh, at the moment. As you say, though, uh, managing to pull a bit of a gap uh, did uh, did Hawkins. So nine tenths of a second, but now as we go into like this uh, final kind of third of the lap, you've got this long straight going into one third CR, which is nearly flat for these cars. And then you've got the pit straight as well. It, it really enables the, the drivers to close back in on one another. And actually, Hawkins gaps going for nine tenths of a second going into Spoon, back down to half a second. Uh, by the time we get into the chicane, Hawkins doesn't look quite comfortable there. Oh, we've got a lot of damage from Steve Janssen. He was on the back of that train but Janssen has been involved in an incident here and oh it's the same corner that he has issues at early run and then he's been hit right in the corner couldn't have been hit in a worse place that's Simon Mazomo who's gone into him so two drivers who uh, had problems on the uh, first few laps and that is bad luck for Janssen fortunately for him he has got a, 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 a faster pair but he's going to have he's going to lose a lot of time getting back to the pits. Yeah, it's almost a little bit of a lazy spin there. Not much Mazomo could have done. He was already well committed to the line and turn in. So unfortunate for him with the car damage, he'll need to get down the lane somewhat soon to try and see whether he can repair that car, assuming there's any damage as a result of it for Janssen. I mean, that's twice now in uh, in only the first few, half a dozen laps where he's, he's lost the back end in that area. So the C8 in Janssen's hand, maybe not the best out there, we do know Janssen obviously switched over from the Porsche that he's run religiously for the past few seasons. So possibly just trying to get up to speed again with how that car works. And I mean, we know what uh, what story has unfolded for drivers that switched over to the C8 when it first launched within the series. Um, a lot of our regulars were well down the order as a result of that. So um, no doubt he'll pick it up and should be able to get back underway as he's in the lane now to get that first repair out of the way. Yeah, do get a couple of faster pairs to these drivers in these endurance meetings, usually just the one, but uh, with it being a, a, an extra long race, we get the two uh, tonight. Um, Collins catching up to Vlock. Agent Vlock, of course, veteran of the series, doing well as Vlock, actually, up all places from his start. Uh, sometimes uh, a little bit further down than this, but uh, when he gets into clear air, he can be very quick. So eighth place would be some good points, double points as well for all these endurance meetings. I believe there is a, a little kind of mini championship. I don't believe with any prizes as such, uh, if I'm going for the overall championship, but so uh, there's a mini championship for the endurance meetings, four of them, I believe, across the season. Might just be uh, might just be three for this season. How, how many are there actually for this season? Because I know it, it, it's kind of a weird season because we had the Winter Cup, didn't we? But have you got two more to go after this one for the endurance uh, meetings or, or is it another three after this, Daniel? Uh, no, so after Sebring we've still got two more to come, so we'll have uh, uh, Monza in two more two rounds time and then to close uh, the second to last round yet to be announced as what it is going to be. Um, I'd actually like to see it sort of back up and, and we do maybe a sprint and an endurance at my favourite track, Sam Sebring. 
<laughs> uh, T-Ring's going to so close out the championship. So as an enduro, that, uh, as a sprint format, that'll be great. But uh, yeah, can uh, be interested to see what our race uh, organisers look at for that final uh, endurance event, which will be round 11 of the season. Um, well, uh, I guess that'll be... No, that won't be in the new season, will it? Uh, I was thinking maybe they could use, like, uh, if Not Kill is released, could use Not Kill, but uh, I, I, it won't be released until after this season is complete. Um, Long Beach? Long Beach, anyone? Uh, no. Um, it, it, it hasn't gone so well from the races I've seen, at least at Long Beach, but... Uh, Boy, I'd love to see uh, love to see these cars around on the beach. It would be uh, a, a proper tr tricky to overtake, but uh, would be uh, a, a good test for the drivers. I visited Belle Isle in this series, from, from what I've seen, at least maybe, maybe pre. We have done a Belle Isle event, and it was actually quite good. I know there was a lot of reservation about going there, but um, Belle Isle turned out to be one of one of the, the better races that we've seen. For this one, uh, so potentially that I'd love to see Long Beach come in because that's a phenomenal driver's circuit um, and very technically challenging, similar to what Belle Isle is as well. As there's a move for Whitesell, not able to get it through on Mazoma, he still continues on after that incident earlier on with Jensen. Last leg into the pits. That's a bit early for last leg. I don't think he's got any damage. So uh, interesting call. Cool. Um, Mazoma's going to be struggling down the straights with that uh, aero damage. There goes Whitesell. Passed up into the 21st. Starts in sixth place to Chris Whitesell. Uh, on the comeback trail now. Uh, ben Henniker just ahead of, uh, of these guys. This is uh, a tight little group. Might just be worth though going back up to the uh, Hawkins, Warwick, Cooper, Sanders, Bowden. Barnes uh, battle. All oh, so close to <laughs> Hawkins. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, what, what's he got in that car? It's as though he's got a shield at the back of it, which means that no one can overtake him because, uh, well, he's been absolutely hounded every minute of this uh, Suzuka race. Yeah, they just can't get past. What just can't get past? Maybe, maybe if Cooper had a shot at, uh, at Hawkins, then maybe he'd be uh, straight past. You can see 50 degrees track temperature. So it's warm, and it's only going to get warmer. There's a half move again from Warwick Hawkins. I, I think we'll understand to be a bit annoyed by that one because, you know, it's those types of moves that kind of put you offline without really a proper committed move. Warwick will be very close to going to 130. Yeah, I doubt he will go for an overtake, though. Here he goes, though, down the inside. Yeah, just lifts out of it. Oh, he's uh, really gesturing into the mirrors just feel as though daniel and i don't know maybe this is armchair expert here but oh, as uh, wide goes cooper there was a bit of movement in the breaking area from warwick to fend off the move and cooper had to uh, take evasive action that is uh, sanders straight past so uh yeah i was just about to say there daniel i i feel like warwick is kind of cutting off some of these entries a bit too much he's gesturing to the inside and it's making the uh, making the course a bit more cute for him and it's a compromising his exit so I wonder if it would just be better if he stopped making half moves and, and just really committed to one or two moves yeah I think um, I mean Hawkins doing a, a, a fantastic job just to hold that line and, and really make um, Warwick work for the for the move and we're going to continue to see that throughout the course there's another challenge a little further back with Whitesell on Rock Kramer and uh, Whitesell actually not able to do it and almost fine in the weeds as a result but uh but, but Hawkins here, he's doing nothing wrong. He's just positioning the car efficiently. He's not moving in the braking zone. He's really forcing um, Paul Warwick to think about those moves. Warwick, if he's going to have a go, he's just got to send it, get down the inside and go where he can. These little sort of half moves that he's doing um, are only going to leave, leave one of these or both of these cars ruining a move because it's going to end in disaster for everyone. As you see, a little bit of a moment there for Warwick on the exit. He's just got to get in and get this move completed sooner rather than later. Yeah, I wonder how much faster he could be going if it's uh, if it weren't for that. They did qualify next to one another on the grid, and now 26 seconds off the lead, which is um, I know 13 doubles. I don't know. Uh, I was about to say it's something to do with the pit stop, but we don't really know how long the pit stops are going to be. Uh, it, it would be the equivalent of about a 10 second pit stop, 
um, let's say, but we're expecting the pit stops to be, uh, well, a, a wide range because, like I said earlier on, you'll have uh, have uh, even one of the pit stops. You've got to take tyres, Bowden into the wall. That's not a big hit. You might be able to continue in that tanked SRT machine. It was. And he's um, just to have his teammate here. He runs onto the Astro Turf, spins round, and could have been a whole lot worse. Barely any damage on that car. Has he continued on his way? He has, so he's not feeling the need to get that damage fixed. No, it was only a very small um, glance of the wall there, so he should be relatively all right. He's going to have to uh, get up to speed pretty quick, though, because he's got Chris Forsyth, uh, Forsyth right on the back of him, and uh, these two are going to need to work if they want to close up on that train. There's also um, a change between the Hawkins and Warwick. Warwick now has managed to get through on Bretton Hawkins, and uh, they work their way up through the S's, so let's see what Paul's able to do now that he's released, but here's a look at the replay of how this one went through. The stern defence of Brenton Hawkins finally breaking. Oh, and it was uh, it was an odd move. I don't know why Hawkins was so slow coming out of turn two, but Warwick saw his chance, and that's a nice move right there from him. And then immediately Hawkins struggling to stay close to the S. It really does seem to be struggling around that part of the circuit, and that gap opening up to one second, so Hawkins just not with the pace. It was. Oh, he was really low revs there. Uh, what? Yeah, uh, I think he's just yeah. missed kicking it back a gear into second there because he just didn't have the exit speed. Through the mid corner, through the high, high speeds, third's not a bad idea, but with uh, the way you shoot these cars out through the second phase there of turn two, you really need to go back into second to get the drive and momentum and think just didn't get the downshift required to do oh. so. There's this battle for third really heating up between Huppets and Ben Dow now. Seven seconds off the lead, these drivers. They can just about see the leaders out in the distance, or at least see Davison out in the distance. There's Bishan Sim Racing versus Ben Dow, who is running as a privateer, at least in, uh, at least in this series. And they got Glasspool not too far behind, and also uh, Tom Huggin as well. Uh, did Glasspool get back past Huggin? Because we saw Huggin overtake Glasspool earlier on, didn't we? And yet, uh, uh, the other way around. Yes, yeah, so we didn't see the move for it, but uh, yeah, those two definitely redressing. And that car too that was just uh, in the back of shot as we were looking at Ross Rizzo is uh, the lap down car of Steve Janssen as well. So not in contention for that one as there's a redress for the 627 against the 913. So Creamer uh, those and guys, White Yeah, Creamer and White on, on that one. White currently ahead. Uh, so that, yeah, that was Kramer giving back the place. Ooh, White's already out of shape. Jeez. Ah, that was the, uh, that was the address. There you go. Ooh, this was, uh, something to, uh, yeah, that, that perhaps was the, uh, origins of the incident. Yeah, that would also explain that big wiggle that we saw a Weitzel as well down the inside. So uh, that was a, a lap or two prior to that uh, redress going around. Rizzo being kept more on it now by Davison. It's 2.5 seconds separating the two leaders and that gap has kind of been maintaining. So certainly not the runaway victory that uh, we we're fearing that Rizzo might achieve in the first couple of laps looks very evenly matched between the top two drivers now uh, meanwhile move into 130r for chris keeping on michael schroeder they've got lee kogan and michael uh, uh yeah sorry uh, lee kogan uh, getting past uh michael schroeder as well and then they've got jarvin wood as well just at the back of this one uh, Brenton hawkins a bit further back as well Do we, uh, what happened to yeah Peter? well actually just got to thank uh mr trent thomas who's in the uh the chat here just mentioning that uh, hawkins got nerfed uh in towards the hairpin so here's a look at this one unfold 
and that's a hefty serve down in towards the hairpin there. So that Porsche will definitely need to uh, redress that position. And uh, Hawkins fell well back as a result of that. I mean, he was up in 11th spot, now down in 27th. So a 15 second post-race penalty. I'm surprised they didn't just give him like a drive through penalty to Sanders, but a 15 second post race instead. Sanders immediately feeling bad and actually he has tried to adjust that one, but Hawkins lost so much time that it was probably best just to um, Kai on his way. But uh, that's a shame because oh, I think that would have been, it would have taken 90 minutes, I think, for every one of them to get past Hawkins because he was defending so well, making so few mistakes. And uh, well, unfortunately, that, uh, that nice battle doesn't have to Hawkins. We might see those few drivers just on the outskirts of the top 10 or just outside the top 10 starting to, uh, start to spread out a bit more. Top two matching each other on that last lap. Huppert's down a bit slower. Collins gets in closer to Vlock. Most laps here. Uh, on that last lap, he gained by um, two one hundredths of a second. This time, he loses. Uh, no, sorry, he gains by another one and a half tenths of a second. This is as close as he's been all race long, but this is where the turbulent air really starts to kick in and the moves become a bit more tricky. Yeah, and both these cars very evenly matched. I mean, both C8s, exact same setup on them, and uh, only the driver talent to really eke out that little bit of performance advantage in it because uh, the way they've got these cars set up for the setup that uh, is, is being run in this championship, very consistent on the tyres. I was fortunate enough to have a bit of a run in it over the Christmas Cup, and, uh, yeah, it's one of those cars that really just likes to hold on to the tyres exceptionally well, keep turning it in and, and away she goes. So these guys are going to be in for a really strong battle here, and it's only going to be a, uh, a lapse of judgment by either of them that's going to see this gap, either someone lose the spot or uh, the gap extend in the way that we've seen previously. Could be a good chance here for Collins going into Spoon. Easy flat out through this uh, long right hander. Uh, Glass pulls off the. Oh, uh, yeah, that yeah, is a bit of a problem for Glass Paul. So Huggins got back past Glass Paul once again. And there is Glass Paul. Must have gone wide through the first part of Spoon, I imagine. Maybe picked up the curb on the outside and gone skidding off. I really honestly hope that that is what has happened. Have I got it right? Oh, it's looking good. It's looking good. He's run wide. Oh, I'll put away my crystal ball. There you go. Um, and then uh, onto the grass. And yeah, that's fifth place gone. Yeah, it's such an easy uh, spot to, to loop the car around there because you carry a huge amount of momentum on the way in through the first phase of that corner before you get onto the back straight there. And the minute you've got to touch the brakes at that spot, it's uh, very easy to go around. These guys just avoiding that little bit of a high line on the, uh, the curb on the outside there. So they work their way through and Barnes now behind. And, uh, gee, this is on the replay here too. Sorry, so Barnes losing that spot to Forsyth down the back straight. And uh, Forsyth actually getting them a little bit of hip and shoulder on the entry to 130R, not where you want to have uh, side to side contact at all. Could have been uh, far worse going into 130 yard, but uh, they got away with it. Uh, we are getting into the realm now where we could start seeing some pit stops. Uh, you kind of want to take time. I mean, the I know the fastest, the fastest way to get to the finish has got Newton uh, just lets him pass Sanders there, maybe realizing that Sanders is uh, a bit of a faster driver. Um, the the kind of the ideal strategy theoretically is to come in for your first pit stop on the 45 minute mark take tires take a little bit of fuel and then uh, basically run that fuel until maybe about an hour and 10 into the race and then pit once again just for fuel for your second pit stop that's kind of like the theoretical fastest way to get to the finish but it's rare that drivers actually go for that because if everyone did that you'd just come out back in traffic and it uh, wouldn't necessarily be uh, the, the, the best way is probably better to kind of alternate uh, to, to kind of the opposite of, of your rivals, do something a bit different, get some clear air, maybe get the undercut as well with the uh, with the fresh tyres. 
So, uh, but uh, yeah, expect to see some pit stops at, uh, quite soon. We've got Kobe Laszlo into the pits, Todd George, Michael Pizzari, Rob Bowden, uh, Steve Janssen and Rob Harris have all come into the pits. Harris, uh, yeah, they're, they're all running. They're all running on the, uh, well, a couple of them are just one lap down, but uh, all they're running quite competitively at the moment. Uh, but I uh, expect that list to grow in uh, the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, Simpson is now into the pits. And also Brock Kramer as well is also into the pits. Here comes Mazomo on Henneker. Henneker's having a good race up eight places into 16th. Uh, Mazomo is struggling for that straight line speed despite being in the fastest car down the straight. The BMW with that lacking of a front end, it's uh, not helping his cause. No, and since that incident too that he, we saw him in, in, involved in earlier with Jansen, the, the pace really hasn't fallen away from that car at all. Still hovering in the uh, the 158 realm, which is, is pretty standard for what we're seeing from most of the cars uh, just on the, the, the back end of that top 10 currently. So the consistency is still pretty good there. He is being held up a little bit now by Hanukkah as the guys work their way up through the mid phase of the track just before we do the, uh, the cross of the figure eight under the bridge. And, um, and it's really good to see in this point just the difference between these two cars. The Porsche is very good on that short um, sort of stop 90 degree corners and getting away and making it a little bit trickier for Mazomo here. So it's, uh, this fight's going to continue on for a fair bit. The, uh, the pit stop's probably where we're going to expect to see that small bit of a change for position for either of these two, I think. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe an undercut or something could uh, could be a, a, a smart, smart method on on that. Um, can't help but feel like surely Mazomi should be into the pits quite quickly to get that done. I picks up that. Keep on saying, a couple of fast repairs for for these drivers. So, so perhaps Mazomi doesn't pick, get that uh, little bit of damage fixed. If it is costing him any time, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe uh, is uh, not really affecting him at all and uh, can carry on. Collins right on the tail of Lark Hold bit. That gap has just increased a little bit again. Mistake from Collins actually, because that gap was down to a tenth. It's back up to six tenths. Very, very uh, fluctuating that gap between eighth and ninth. Uh, this uh, bat's a little bit more static with Harpert's maintaining a four tenths of an advantage over Bendel, who will be saving a bit of fuel which could prove helpful later on that last lap though unfortunately for Harpers he lost one second to Ross Rizzo and 1.3 seconds to Danny Davidson Davidson just playing in his personal best lap of the race and bringing that gap between the two leads down to 2.4 seconds so it kind of got different battles out there the battle for first and second but the battle for the third position uh, I think uh, Harpers Dow Huggard might get involved Glassball looks quick early on as well then a couple of others as well. Most of them, they starting to separate a bit out because you can check out the gaps between each of the drivers uh, on the timing tile on the left. But if you want to see all the drivers, not just the top 20, you can uh, click on the live timing link in the description below. And that is provided to you by SDK Gaming. And on that, it will open a web page and you can see the driver's last lap times, their best lap times, uh, the gaps to the leader, the gaps uh, to one another. Yeah, pit stop times, the uh, pit stop lap that they came in. Uh, it's all really useful information. So uh, do check out that link. And uh, big thanks to SDK Gaming for also providing our lovely play that you can see, uh, which is really good for a heads up display as well whilst you're racing. So if you're looking to do some streaming or uh, just uh, to have a fuel calculator, do check out SDK Gaming and you can do a bunch of customization and uh, yeah, could uh, improve your driving a little bit as well. Agent Block into the pit, which I'm a little bit surprised about because he was defending from Collins, wasn't he? So I would have thought he'd maybe he was coming off the uh, the undercut from Collins, I guess. Yeah, quite possibly. It's not a bad idea to, to come through the lane now because I mean, that fight between himself and Collins was, was only maybe slowing them down a little bit as they work through. So Vlock comes in, we'll see whether the car goes up and takes uh, the tyres at that point as well. Uh, we also did see a lap ago, Mazomo jumped in the lane to complete his first stop of the night. A little bit longer for him out there. Uh, that stop was around 19 seconds stationary. Uh, so we'd expect to see the uh, the repairs done on that car, and a bit of fuel going in. And I think we'll see the tyre strategy come into play a little later on for him.
quite used to any uh, issues with the uh, uh, stream if there uh, are a couple, but uh, yeah, certainly trying to uh, just adjust them. So apologies for any technical issues that might be occurring. Um, but meanwhile, with the racing, White Soul to the back of Imbury. Imbury up 13 places now, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, Pulse Racing Team uh, White Soul. Who, uh, got involved in an incident in the uh, very early stages of the race, has made up most of those places. He was down outside the top 20 at one point. So to get back up into 14th place, albeit with uh, a few of the drives ahead of him coming into the pits, is not a bad effort. But this is looking like a good one. Real nice exit there from Spoon. And uh, well, the drives don't really like making moves into 130. Yeah, it can be a risky one, but he's already alongside. He'll get his nose ahead on turn. And and him, he's not got any response to that one. Chris Whitesall up into 13th position. That's that there from Collins. That's not best up for the race. Getting a bit of clear air now that uh, Block has come into the pits and also Warwick as well. A few personal best laps as the uh, fuel starts to decrease. Uh, these drivers should be able to go another 20 minutes on their tank of fuel if they wish. Um, however, expect most drivers to pit before that in order to get the benefits of the fresh tyres on the car. White's are just running a little bit wide through the first corner, but uh, he'll hang on to that position. Chris Barnes a little bit off the circuit, just ahead of these guys, but uh, he's recovered all right, remains in 12th place. Yeah, definitely. And, and the, the gaps are pretty well settled now. We'll probably see a bit of fit, a bit of a change come through. I'm just saying, Sam, when those pit stops uh, cycle through. Uh, the nice thing that I'm noticing, and I know a few of the viewers have seen as well, is the uh, the top four, four different manufacturers up there. And I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen the Ferrari, uh, let alone two of them, up inside the top ten. And uh, great to see those guys getting up there and being very competitive um, so far throughout the championship. Dow still hasn't made that move yet on the back of Nathan Huppert. And uh, Huggen following his switch from Ford to the Ferrari. Uh, getting to grips with that exceptionally fast as well. Who, who was that? So was that Huppets? Uh, so Huggen did the change from uh, yeah. Ford from from the Ford GT over to Ferrari, uh, which hasn't impacted him as big as what we've seen from a few other drivers out there making those switches. But uh, yeah, getting on with business pretty quickly as we see keeping now still fighting against Bretton Bull. In, the, in another Ferrari, so the third Ferrari out there so far. We've got seven Ferraris in total in the field tonight, which is uh, pretty impressive, I must say. Yeah, of course, those uh, viewers who are new to the championship all fixed setup, so the car should be evenly matched, but the Ferrari is kind of slower with the open setup, so it's tricky to make it even. With, uh, with a fixed setup and also most drivers we don't run it I think in the official series as well where it is open setup so uh, hence kind of the disadvantage that it has uh, the Porsche certainly in the Apex Racing League GT Championship which is launching tonight at Phillip Island so I uh, recommend checking that one out at uh, 20 GMT um, uh, in that series I think about 25 out of 50 cars are the Porsche. So the Porsche is certainly the car to go to at the moment. And the Ferrari, yeah, barely any entries. And we've only seen that for a few months. So, yeah, you're absolutely right, Daniel. It is nice to see a couple of them up in the top five at the moment. And uh, four of them up in the top 20. We can still see the uh, field largely being dominated by the 9-11s. Uh, 39 minutes into this race. Another little, a quick shout-out to virtual racing school who help us on apex racing tv to pump out these broadcasts uh, virtual racing school uh, making some fantastic uh, data packs for, uh, for for setups for cars and also driving tutorials um, so big thanks to virtual racing school for their continued supports of apex racing tv um, cooper ahead of forsyth but is forsyth lapping much faster he is Nine tenths of a second faster that last time around is Mitchell Bales, who's been having an awesome race as Mitchell Bales. I uh, believe he's a pro driver, not the amateur. That is indicated by a strike. Uh, 
has, but I think that still means that he was top of the period drivers anyway, so he's still doing very well. Is uh, is Mitchell Bales, uh, and uh, he's coming to the pits for his first pit stop. Uh, so far, the drivers who have come into the pits haven't been taking tyres. So they're wanting to leave their tyres until later on. It makes sense, we're not yet halfway through the race. Uh, but they will leave those tyres till a bit later on in the event. What, what's the tyre wear at the moment, Dan? Do, do you know too much about what the tyre wear is? Like you were saying, how the C8 in particular preserves its, its tyres quite well. Do you think there's going to be much of an advantage with the undercut for these guys? Uh, potentially. I think a lot of that undercut, though, is definitely going to be tra taken away with the temp out on circuit. We had a look before, it was up around the 50 degree mark. Um, track-wise, which is just going to make it really tough for all these guys. There is going to be a lot of sliding going around and um, not going to help them too much. So I think, like you were saying there, Sam, tyres, whether you, whether you thought you could get the undercut on them in this early phase, probably everyone is going to line up and go, well, the track is as hot as it is. We'll get them at the very end and um, suffer through the little bit of pain early on to, to get a, a pretty quick rocket trip at the end. I would love it if iRacing implemented uh, a system similar to what other uh, uh, simulators and other kind of racing games have where you can uh, accelerate the uh, the tyre wear. would make these races fascinating if we had maybe five times tyre wear. Um, because, yeah, with this high track temperature, as you mentioned, the tyres would be absolutely destroyed by this point of the race if we had uh, a bit more tyre wear. Now, uh, Rizzo into the pits from the race lead. I assume that will be for tyres for Ross Rizzo. Um, again, a bit surprised that that's quite so early, but maybe fearing that Davidson was going to try something a bit uh, different, maybe uh, entering a bit of traffic, as you can see ahead. I think that's Chris Weitzel. Is that Chris Weitzel? No, is it? Uh, it might be Jarvin Wood, actually, just ahead of Danny Davidson at the moment. Um, now he's going to have to overtake, so maybe trying to get out of the traffic, Rizzo. Um, getting a bit of clear air. How long is he stationary for? It looks like he's taking tyres then, is Rizzo. So one of the first tries to take tyres. And that will drop him a bit further down the order. I hope he's done his calculations right here because I fear as though he might come out into quite a bit of traffic here, Daniel. Well, yeah, I'm just having a look down the uh, the start finish rate. There's a lot of, well, there was a lot of traffic going through. So he's going to find himself at the very back of that. He's got uh, Mitchell Bales, you can just see right behind so going to have a little bit of breathing room at that point the gap when he, he came in was still hovering around that 2.6 second range so he had a bit of time up his sleeve um following uh, against davison so now it's up to davison when will he blink and come through davison at the moment heading down towards 130 r so uh, we'll keep an eye on that to see whether he does uh, tip in for the, the lane or continue on for a little bit further but uh, they're definitely going to be in his mind thinking about what he needs to do now to uh, uh, either undercut Ross Rizzo or, or get back out in, uh, in in a competitive spot. I am surprised that um, Rizzo was kind of the first one to blink because it does kind of give the opportunity now for Davison to uh, react to this one and uh, it seems like he's reacted with a pit stop. So he goes one lap further it's rare that we see these drivers go for such similar strategies. Usually it's uh, a real big change, but uh, it's uh, quite cool to see that the drivers being so, uh, or pitting so similarly to one another, uh, just uh, showing how even, uh, because we're going to see the, the proper pace uh, comparison between the two of them, will mean that uh, Derson will have one lap pressure tyres till the end of the race. But uh, yeah, I did think that maybe could have, gone a little bit further on because especially if we get a safety car now um, if he'd gone a bit further then uh, the, uh, the those fresh tyres would have been really useful in the closing stages of the race. It means that Huppert is in the lead of this event. Ben Dahl in second place. Huggen and Glasspool I think closing in a little bit they're all kind of maintaining at the moment these four so evenly matched and their driving stands so far in this race have been very high quality as Dow runs a little bit wide and you don't want to run wide through the second Degna. Um, where has um, where where has Davison come out of the pits? He Davison didn't uh, pit the tires then. He's just taken fuel. So uh, doing the opposite of Rizzo, I guess. Um, what do you think of that one, Daniel? It's an interesting strategy. At the moment, 
Not a bad idea. I'm just looking at Rizzo. He is coming up on the back of a, uh, a fistful of traffic in front of him. So he's not going to want to have that uh, get in his way or hinder him. But uh, admittedly, those guys do not need to step sideways and let him through. They are battling for the position at this point in time. So um, for Ross, he's going to have to be clean, concise where he makes those moves and make them stick the first time he sticks the nose in. So um, it's a good call from Davison to just take the fuel. And, and he's now got himself a very hefty margin. Uh, and the road conditions are quite good for him currently as our current leaders, Huppets and Dale, again continue on for another lap. So taking pretty much the strategy that you suggested early on, Sam, just run it out as long as possible and then come through maybe for either the tyres or, or the fuel only as uh, now Huggen and Glasspool drive in the lane for their first stop of the night. Just a reminder, um, because I know it's tricky to, uh, to, to follow the strategy and uh, um, also kind of the, the, the rules for, for new viewers, but everyone has to take tyres at some point in the race. So if you're looking at that Davison, uh, Rizzo, Batson thinking it's a case of Rizzo having to catch up to Davison, he, he doesn't really. I mean, it's just a case of him because Davison will have to make and take tyres and will have a, a longer second stop. So it's kind of just the pace comparison. Davison needs to, uh, still needs to, to be just as fast to the end of the race now as, as, as Rizzo, uh, really. Um, Rizzo with a light fast lap time there, but he's getting held up. And these tenths of a second uh, could be important. Chris Keeping just minding his own business and Rizzo, um, coming into the pits pretty early and I, I thought that he may have come into the pits to avoid the traffic but if that was his mission well it hasn't worked because he was coming up to some lap drivers but these guys don't have to let him pass keeping uh, not driving particularly well either with his old tyres and keeping I imagine will lift out of this one and just let Rizzo go before the Digna but that must be there you go that's 1.2 seconds lost and that's kind of a, a lap of the fresh tyres just eliminating. So got two more cars to deal with. Yeah, that's a very costly move, and yeah, you know, that was the part we were sort of saying. Rizzo was there thereabouts as far as the pace was concerned, but just didn't have enough momentum to, to stick the move down the inside. And Keeping did nothing wrong in that scenario. He just parked the, court, the car where he needed to, ran his line, and, and really it made Ross have to work for it. Admittedly, at the end, did run a little wide um, through the final part of the, the sweeper up, but. Um, yeah, certainly just placing the car where he needed to. Ross, as you say, though, that lap effectively is burnt. Um, a little bit of time off that fresh set of tyres, which he really needs right now to close that gap up to Danny Davison, which is currently sitting at 18 seconds. So um, Davison's got himself a nice bit of an advantage at the moment. We do know that Ross is a very responsible driver. He's not going to go for any stupid moves here. He, he really does play the percentages well. He's a master when it comes to the, to the strategy. Um, so he's, he's not going to make any rash decisions here, but uh, and would rather take his time than a risk it. Oh, well, as I say that, he goes for a very slim gap. He breathes in, and he's going to surely be past going to turn one. Yep, uh, Henneke just... Uh, Giving up that one, albeit so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as fast. So There's a bit of a flashing of the lights because they uh, didn't expect Rizzo to go that direction past him. Uh, next up for Rizzo will be Davidson. The car just in front of Rizzo is a back marker. Shouldn't be so difficult to overtake, seeing that uh, before he lets him pass. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's Michael Schroeder just uh, lifting out of the throttle to uh, facilitate that overtake. So yeah, Davison with an 11 and a half second advantage now. Tyres, um, I thought tyres would take about 26 seconds to take. Oh, as we've got tires a car in the wall, and that is a back marker. Huppertz and Co. having to take a very tight line. They've all gone deep into the corner. Dal couldn't take advantage of it because he went deep himself as Huppertz dives into the pit lane. Dal will continue for another lap. Um, who was it who had that crash, though? Was it Sanders, maybe? No, I don't think it was Sa Sanders. I'm just trying to have a look. I think it might have been Alex Newton, potentially. Actually, yeah, well, you're right. Brad Saunders involved in that one. Here is the look at the replay down through 130R. And again, just picks it up on that AstroTurf. And around she went. Nothing you could do about that one. 
the awkward spot is going to be how does he rejoin the circuit here because there was another car that came through that uh, had a very similar moment and I don't know whether we'll be able to catch that on uh, on this particular replay or not. There's actually another Porsche having a moment in front of Huppets and Dow there. So it looks like both drivers just having their own little moments as they work their way through. So Huppets, uh, has he taken tyres? He is taking tyres, is Nathan Huppets, or he's just taking loads of fuel. No, I'm pretty sure he is taking tyres then. Is, uh, is Nathan Huppets. Um, so he will drop down uh, probably outside the top 10 then. Well, Huppets, uh, Huggen already into the pits. Huggen didn't take tyres. So remember, it was Huppets in third place, Huggen in fifth place. And now that is uh, that 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 is um, a Huggen uh, up ahead. Uh, Huppert's stationed for a long time. I wonder if he's got a uh, a speeding penalty here. Ah, oh, this would be a massive shame for Nathan Huppert. who uh, has, uh, of course, nearly won the championship a couple of seasons ago. Lost out narrowly to Timothy Feeben. Uh, has shown some individual good races since then. But his form has been a little bit up and down. One of the most unlucky drivers, I would say, as well as Huppert's. But he's had a good season this season. But I believe that was a penalty for him because he was stationary for uh, a minute and a quarter there, which is uh, about 40 seconds longer, or 30 seconds longer than pretty much everyone else who's pitted. Yeah, that's a day, day and a half away, just sitting there on the lane waiting to, to get back under it. And I don't know... Um, whether he got any damage. It doesn't look like it as we ride on the onboard and see how the car comes down, but gets into the lane pretty quickly. We did see a few little smoke signals as we, we watched the car live go in, so maybe marginally over, but I wouldn't have thought that would have cost him as much time as it has. Oh, Chris Whitesell's off the circuit. Chris Whitesell with a problem out there. Uh, yes, but he's somehow no. I was about to say maybe he somehow missed the uh, missed the wall. I think he has hit the wall. Judging from that on board, looked like the bonnet was a, a little bit skew off. Here yeah, we are. He backed it in somewhere too because the wing's gone. Oh yeah, yep. Well, why so? I was going to say, it looked like the car just bottomed out there, getting over the curves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Whitesall, uh, still with a pit stop to go, will still have a fast repair to use, but uh, what could have been for him? Uh, could have been a top 10 for Chris Whitesall, but uh, he will do well to finish in the top 15, really, from, from, from here on in. Uh, Jarvan Wood onto the back of uh, Peterson Hawkins. Hawkins back up there now. Huppets off the circuit. What's happened to Huppets? After it's, it's all gone wrong for Huppets after a brilliant a first for the 50 minutes of this race. It's all gone very downhill for him very quickly and it's a solo error. I saw him go off the circuit. He dips a wheel onto the grass but that's not a problem and then he's run a bit wide and he's about the fifth car to have a problem like that. He's tapped the wall. He should be able to continue without the need for a faster pair. But Huppert's his chances of getting a podium have gone down the drain because uh, those that speeding on pit entry and now that spin that that's probably cost him about 40 seconds combined. Yeah, it's really hurt, hindered his uh, run for the second half of the race. As Ben Dow now comes into the lane to relinquish the lead of the race, but. Yeah, for, for Huppert at the moment, just struggling to find that little bit of luck that he needs. I'm wondering if the way the car rotated around, it looked like he was very close to the grass on the outside just before you tip into 130R. So I'm wondering if maybe when he's tried to brake and uh, just catching that bit of grass hasn't slowed the car enough and a little bit of overspeed that he's carried through there has just let him up onto the uh, curb and around she's gone. Davison into the pits now. Apologies, I got it. I called it wrong earlier on. Davison did take tyres at his first pit stop. He just took like no fuel <laughs> because the the tyres take 27 seconds. He was stationed for 29, so he literally took barely any fuel. That's why he's had to come into the pits a bit earlier. So actually, that period of the race should have been Davison's, and, and he was setting some vacant turns on purple that time. So Davison. Uh, was trying to sprint away then so it wasn't the the strategy that I thought where he didn't take tyres he did take tyres was lightning quick for a little while and now he's taking 
the rest of the fuel that he needs in order to get to the end of the race. So now, Rizzo needs to start out lapping Davison and go as far as he can. He's got less fuel than Davison now has Rizzo. They've got the same age tyres. Davison with one lap fresher tyres, but that shouldn't make much of a difference. Uh, but this should be Rizzo's part of the race now. He's got uh, probably about 20 less litres of fuel in that car approximately. And he should be able to continue in this race for another 15, 20 minutes. Probably, yeah, probably 20 minutes in this race now, Rizzo. So uh, this is probably going to be close between Davison and Rizzo. I, I think if Rizzo pitted now, he would come out just behind Davison. So he needs to be lapping a couple of tenths a lap quicker in order to win this race. But uh, it will be fascinating now the next 20 minutes to see who, uh, who has the advantage between these two. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's a 30 second advantage uh, to Ross Rizzo at the moment. Uh, looking at what we're seeing from the pit stops, the guys are still going to need somewhere around the vicinity of about 50 seconds to get in and out um, and retain the lead. So that bit of traffic that Rizzo hit following his first pit stop ultimately has potentially really hurt his run here at the, the uh, at taking the victory tonight. But he's got to get down and knock in those laps as he can. And, and we know that Rizzo can get down there. He's got a fair bit of clear road ahead of him uh, a little bit before he catches up to the back markers. And, the advantage for him at the moment is our current leaders still need to come in the lane to complete their first stops of the night as well. Yeah, looking at Rizzo's first pit stop time, so he was stationary, or he took about 14 seconds worth of fuel, did Rizzo. Davison took two seconds in his first pit stop, and then Davison took another 19, so that's, uh, that's about 21 seconds, so... You'll probably have to be stationary for about 10 seconds or Rizzo come his last pit stop oh, as he glitches out a little bit. He's back in. Um, yeah, so he'll probably be stationary for about 10 seconds. Pit lane loss is about 20 seconds. So yeah, it, it'll be close. It's 30 seconds at the moment and 20 plus 10 is 30. So it'll, it'll probably be close, I think, between these two. Uh, pretty much whoever is quicker over these next 20 minutes, I think, uh, will probably have the advantage so uh certainly exciting times here at suzuka uh huppert's on the comeback trail uh, in 15th place has got to get past adam simpson i mean this is it shows how much time huppert's has lost because this is full position this is like legit because both of these guys have taken tires both of these guys have pitted once and huppert's has gone from batting for third position to batting for 14th position here he goes for a bit of a very ambitious move, I think. It'd be better just to wait behind a little, a couple of corners longer. Huppert's uh, could still get a top 10 out of this. Certainly Kramer's is possible, but I think much further than that is uh, is unlikely for him, to be honest. Yeah, it's going to be a really tricky run here from him. He's already uh, close to 30-odd seconds, uh, actually 39 seconds off the back of Ben Dell. And when you consider that those two, for the vast majority of the race, oh, no. prior to that bit of contact, were side by side and not far behind each other. This has gone for a, become a, a bit of a uh, unfortunate turn of events here for Nathan. Kind of looked away when uh, when that contact happened. Not quite sure who who spot it was, but um, slamming into uh, slamming into the door and uh, maybe Harper's will. I thought they pass up as I just into the pits right now and uh, uh, just try to get some clear air. Uh, Work still leading ahead of Cooper. Uh, two steps faster there for Cooper on that last lap tour. Uh, for, for Zari Woods and Simpson are having an almighty bat and I'm not sure who to watch uh, because it's so close between the top two and it's close with these guys. But look at this, Woods going defensive. For Zari, around the uh, around, approaches, that's Wood around the outside. For Zari, oh, that could have so easily been contact. But it's for Zari still ahead then. Um, and in 15th, place behind them adam simpson for frog leap racing team trying to get ahead as well i think he kind of just lifted out of that one if anything wasn't right in the draft so it's bizarre who i'm pretty sure is the slowest one of this lot jarvan was a bit further down than uh you'd expect him the first position he started with so i think he started out of position for Zai, to be fair started in 35th so maybe the BMW will start will start to pull away from these drivers. Uh, Mitchell Bales has had an issue in seventh place. Um, 
think he's all right. Oh, maybe he, I think he just lost the pace to Tom Huggin. wasn't too bad. Warwick can Cooper into the pits. So that seemed to be as far as the fuel could go. So they went as far as they could on a tank of fuel. Um, and uh, yeah, nice work from them. Now they're going to have the fresher tyres of anyone out there. Yeah, and, but the, the hard part for these guys too is they still got to come back down a second time to knock over those stops. So we'll keep an eye to see how quick these are. I'm going to assume that at this point in time, it's going to be tyres as well going on board those cars. They're at 16 seconds stationary so far. So it should be not too bad for them both down and away. It was actually a little bit quicker in, in advantage for Warwick. He did a nine, uh, stationary 19.4 seconds and uh, 21.8 respectively for those two drivers. So a little bit of a, uh, a gap advantage to Warwick on the way out. And then the replay of that move between Huggen and Bales. And, and Bales making a bit of a meal of Spoon Corner there. He took four or five attempts to get the car settled and in and uh, for Huggen, just a nice run on the racing line. and. Around she goes. Yeah, and that, uh, that wasn't exactly a move for position because Huggen was going to have a much shorter final pit stop anyway, but certainly a move for track position. Huggen could get third position out of this one. Of course, he's battling with um, Ben Dowell, isn't he? Uh, for that place, Dowell with a 11 second longer first pit stop, and it's now eight seconds behind, so not much of a gap between those two drivers when you take that into consideration. Uh, Rizzo back into the lead of this race then with his uh, pit stop during about 10 to 20 minutes time. Glasspool in second place. Glasspool only 10 seconds off the lead as well. Albeit Glasspool as well had a shorter first pit stop. Uh, ben Henneker doing a brilliant job in third place. He's the only driver yet to pit. Yeah, and he can't be far away from coming in. We've just ticked over the hour mark so far in this event and that uh, is about as far as the fuel will get you in one of these cars and, and right on cue drops into the lane for that pit stop now so uh, he will take first service and, and again we'll assume it'll be tyres and uh, a little drink of fuel to get that car through as uh, James Glasspool also in the lane for his final stop tonight. Yeah Glasspool didn't take much tire and much fuel in his first stop so I uh, have to pit. Uh, still took a similar amount to Davison and yet Davison pitted much earlier but uh, I don't know. I don't know what's uh, what's with that. Maybe Davison's just high speed meant uh, that he ran out of fuel a bit quicker. Uh, Collins, about saying Simpson, back with this battle. Collins has already pitted twice in this race, and Collins is looking good. Um, he was battling with Adrian Vlock, wasn't he, earlier on? Vlock is now a bit further behind, so that works brilliantly for Collins, didn't he? So apologies for not pointing that out early on, but those guys were battling for 8th and ninth, I believe, for the first kind of half an hour of this race. Um, Vlock came in first, but Collins has pulled off a couple of quick pit stops and is now 6 seconds clear of Vlock. You will just see Vlock in the background as a bunch more guys come into the pits. There he is. So, uh, nice, nice. I uh, don't think it was that, that was necessarily the, the strategy from Collins, albeit, you know, the strategy helps. I think it was just pure speed from from uh, Ashley Collins, uh, who was in line now with the problems for Huppers, I guess for a P7 in this race. Um, maybe even a P6. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's driven uh, very well and very much under the radar as well for, for Adam, uh, oh, sorry, Ashley Collins. So great job there, Vlock. Still pressing on, nonetheless, trying to gain any spots that he uh, that he can and uh, any valuable championship points that he can get. The gap's hovering around five seconds to Adam Simpson up the road, uh, but he is continuing to take advantage out of Tim Hilbury uh, and extend that gap. You can see those cars just in the back of frame there as well. Mitchell Bales now in the lane for his second stop tonight. Uh, this will be a relatively short run for him through, and that'll leave just our top three yet to come down the lane for their um, final stops as we see Mazomo back out um, following his pit stop as well. So uh, now it comes down to when do Rizzo, Huggen and Dow all look to come down the lane and have they done enough to try and keep Danny Davison behind them? Rizzo on that last lap was one-tenth faster than uh, this and I have 
really been keeping an eye on their lap times. Um, I might actually, I might propose that actually to uh, maybe SDK game. That'd be a nice feature if we could uh, compare maybe the last ten laps. Actually, can we compare the last ten laps? I'm not sure if we can maybe get the gap between Rizzo and Davison up on the screen with the nice uh, kind of bar chart that we have. Um, not sure if that's possible for drivers who aren't next to one another on track, but uh, we could perhaps try that one. Um, because, uh, yeah, if that gap has come down by more than a second or two, here we go, brilliant job there from uh, Scott Newton. So you can see it's come down a little bit. So obviously the, 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 the bars on the left was back when, uh, or now on the right was back when uh, Davison was ahead of Rizzo. Then he came into his pit stop and since then the gap went up a little bit for um, uh, yeah, a bit between the two and then it, it's come back down a little bit. So um, yeah, will be uh, a, po a, a point to notice. It's pretty much stayed identical, hasn't it? Albeit, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm trying to read too much into that one. Here we go. Oh, that, that's, that's even better. Um, so it's gone from 31.2 seconds to 31.8 seconds. So it's not a very big gap. Is it? That, that's not really changed a whole lot. That, that is uh, tenths of a second between the two of them. So, considering that Rizzo's got less fuel than Davison, I'm, I'm half surprised that he hasn't been able to pull that gap out longer. I, I, I'd have to back Davison on this one. I, I think he may have a two second lead at the moment. But and look at the traffic as well that Rizzo's got to deal with now. This is ebbing away from the car number one right now. Oh yeah, and I was just going to say that I've been keeping an eye on the track map between where both these two cars are situated out there at the moment, and Rizzo has about 10 cars ahead of him. There's a really good shot of the train that he's got to work his way through now, and just uh, has a little bit of a moment through the hairpin there, so he'll have to, to try and make these moves down through the back straight. But for Davison at the moment, he's only got two or three cars ahead of him, and it's a bit of a gap between those cars, so keep an eye on the fourth car at the moment just working into the double right-hander to go under the track and head up towards the hairpin. So he's got two cars ahead before he closes in on Ben Dow and then uh, a few cars up again to Huggen and Rizzo. Both or all three of these cars still got to come down the lane one more time for that final stop tonight. But uh, Rizzo now with the uh, traffic in front, he's got one of the cars there just blinking a fraction in front and that's the last thing you want on such a, uh, a quick part of the circuit. Surely he's got to come into the pits here, so he cannot try to overtake all these guys. The problem is, if he comes in, he will surely be behind Davison, but it was the only thing to do, it was the only, only sensible thing to do. Um, you're not going to be passing 10 cars like that, like you were saying, um, in... Uh, it is so close to one another, so Rizzo, unfortunately, he would have liked to have gone another five, maybe even ten minutes, but um, had to come into the pits. And Danny Davison, with those brilliant lap times when he was on barely any fuel, setting fastest laps of the race, I, I think he will have the advantage here, but it will be very close, and this will surely decide the race win here. Rizzo already, though, coming out of the pit lane, and it is Rizzo ahead after all. So Rizzo has got the advantage on Davison and it was actually rather comfortable in the end. The gap between the two of them before the pit stops even kicks off was about two and a half seconds. It's three seconds now and it turns out that Davison didn't do enough then and Rizzo did open up the gap enough with that uh, uh, lower fuel and uh, well this is certainly the advantage for Rizzo and uh, definitely in hindsight the wise decision to come into the pits when he did. Absolutely, and I don't think either of us expected the gap to have sort of extended based on the traffic that we saw Rizzo in and uh, the difficulties he was having following the first pit stop working his way through. But uh, it, we missed probably a few thing, incidents that Danny had along the way and just not able to make uh, as much of an inroad as, as we expected he, he would have done. And a little bit of traffic for him to contend with too, lap down car there, that's one of the, um, the race on Oz BMWs, I think that might be Alex Newton. And, just going to step aside, or almost step aside to let Danny through, so um, not hindering the flow there. But uh, yeah, definitely a great advantage in favour of Ross at the moment. And all he's got to do is keep it on the island for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, it would be uh, another race victory, making it back to back race wins at Daytona and at Suzuka. Um, the Fazari keeping battle 
and Co. is really good at the moment. There's a few lapped cars as well. Um, I think just at the back of this one, I think this was the train that um, that, that Rizzo opted not to ha try to overtake. You got um, you got Steve Janssen involved in this one as well, who is well out of position. Janssen with a absolute mare tonight. He had um, a spin on lap. Uh, on, on like the second lap I think to Spoon and then he spun again at Spoon got hit by Bozoma which boshed in his steering had to take a faster pair after crawling back to the pits uh, if he could get 17 out of this after all of that I think he'd be quite happy um, so he's got time as well he's got 20 minutes he, he's just the car ahead of us we're riding on board with uh, Brock Kramer then he got Simpson behind Jarvin Woods in 22nd, I thought Wood was a bit further up this uh, this little battle, but maybe Wood just slipping down. And then you've also got Bob Bowden. Oh no, oh. Kramer's been hit absolutely out of nowhere there. Uh, was the uh, was the 27? That was like a jump scare for Kramer because uh, well we had no idea. It was Adam Simpson who came out of nowhere. Well, you can kind of understand Simpson in that uh, situation because. It was uh, it was a wide turn in there for Brock Kramer, but I think it's Kramer's choice to take a wide turn in there, and I think we might well see a penalty for the 488. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if um, for that for Simpson there whether he just missed the markers because he did have um, one of the Pulse Racing cars right up behind. That was Chris Whitesell right behind, and I don't know whether that was maybe just put him off a little bit or not, but. Um, yeah, a big, um, a big incident there, and I think race control may have already adjudicated that one. There was a, uh, a stop and hold issued. I just didn't quite hear the driver name that that was associated to. But yeah, not a, uh, a great run, especially into the hairpin where you know that the speeds are going to be reducing from everyone trying to get through that corner from from such a quick run in through that kink. So um, yeah, a little bit of a lapse of uh, judgment there, and that uh, discussion that race control having was regarding that incident. So. Simpson will have a stop and hold uh, following that collision. Yeah, big shame for Simpson, and and that's kind of, he, he could have redressed that one as well. I think Simpson will be kicking himself for not redressing that one because at least that would have meant the penalty was weaker. I mean, I'd say that incident wasn't as bad as the one that we saw earlier on at, at that corner. I can't recall who it was who got the penalty earlier on there, but. Uh, they actually made an effort to uh, to address and uh, got away with less of a penalty. Was that a car just skating off the circuit? Was that Bowden who's just gone off at the second degma? Um, I thought I saw a car rocket off. Here we go. Uh, there you go. This is my, my youthful eyes uh, working out. Well, there he was and uh, no way of stopping the car. Ooh, and then he hits before the barrier really comes into place. And uh, Bowden, who's already made both pit stops, may have used both faster pairs, albeit I doubt it. Oh, too much curve on the inside. And uh, yep, couldn't stop it. And that's a lot of damage on that car now. Yeah, that's a tricky spot too to uh, end that one. And uh, that car very, very slow now that he has got it out. So we may potentially see a, a safety car following that. Nathan Huppert uh, has come through the lane to complete his second stop as well and uh, gets out just ahead of this battle. He's got Chris, Bar uh, Chris Weitzel closing in on him. As, uh, and Weitzel was, was a part of that incident we saw with um, mm. Simpson as well. So those guys pressing on. Dow and Hagen yet to come through the lane. Dow almost going to be overtaken here by Ross Rizzo. You just see him in the back of shot as uh, we flick up to Tom Hagen and continues on for another lap. So uh, a bold move there to, to try and run this out as far as possible. Yeah, this is as far... So, so Rizzo earlier on actually had more fuel than what Huggen had. So this is how far Rizzo would have run if it weren't for all that traffic. Uh, but because of that traffic, he, he bailed early and um, got the pit stop done. This could be a bit dangerous here for Rizzo. He's got Dal just ahead. You might let him pass it anyway. No allegiances to anyone as, uh, as Ben Dal, but... Uh, might feel so it's better not to battle and just uh, stick in the uh, stream. Or scythe off the circuit, but he's all right. Seventh place, Collins, 16 seconds back, so that's all right. Uh, Collins actually uh, jumping bales as well during the pit stop. So Collins up into eighth position. 
Um, so all of that with his uh, slightly unique strategy. Forsyth in a legit... No, sorry, Forsyth still scored a bit again, so... Um, they will move up a place and also Paul Warwick yet to come into the pits and across the top two yet to come into the pits. You can see who's made uh, one pit stop and who's made two pit stops on the uh, live timing link provided by SDK Gaming. Uh, link to that in the description below. Um, also, another quick shout out this time to uh, Apex Racing Academy. Apex Racing Academy uh, designing setups and driving tutorials. And you can also have a private uh, kind of driving lessons as well from some of the best drivers on iRacing. Uh, Peter Bayman, for example, and Kevin Ellis, both drivers in the Porsche eSports Super Cup. I believe having some good results last night as well in that series. I think both finishing in the top 10. I think uh, Kevin was uh, on the podium in one of the races. So uh, certainly to check out Apex Racing Academy. They've got setups for the GCE cars, GT3 cars, uh, also the prototypes, the single seaters and the Rallycross cars as well. So check out apexracingac.com for more info for a subscription. You also get a, I think you get a free trial as well uh, for that service. Um, Janssen gets ahead of keeping. And uh, this uh, real tight battle that was really uh, igniting earlier on, slightly spreading out, but Janssen has made his way through. He's up into 17th. That should be as far up as he gets us. Huggen has come into the pits. Now, where is Huggen in comparison to Glasspool? Because uh, this is uh, potentially the battle for third position here. Huggen's going to be ahead, it seems. Yeah, it was a, a pretty quick stop for Huggen there as uh, Glassport coming down. He'll have a, a big head of steam on the way in, but I think uh, Huggen just done enough. That's almost similar distance to what we saw for Rizzo getting in and away. Uh, actually, a little bit less, but uh, yeah, great run there from Huggen to do what he was able to do. Warwick still in the lane. Uh, this should be a relatively short stint for him. Uh, should retain that spot again over Ashley Collins. Actually just dips behind these guys as they work their way through. So uh, that little bit of an extended run for Warwick being a little bit costly. And actually this is going to be a, a tyre service for him as well. So the only driver to have taken the tyres in the last 15 minutes, he will be hot to try to uh, get home to the finish. Now holding up Rizzo now a bit, but uh, Davidson not yet gaining on these drivers. Dal is actually lapping as fast as Davidson, so even if Rizzo does have to wait behind uh, the Ferrari driver, it wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world. Dal with another... You know what, I think Dal could probably go until the penultimate lap of the race. I think he's got all the fuel that he needs to get to the end, but he does, by the rules, have to make another pit stop. Um, so Rizzo might spend pretty much the rest of this race cooped up behind the Ferrari. Let's go for one more lap. And is he trying to pick the draft here, is Dal? Looks like it, that. So he wants to stay ahead. And on that last lap, Davidson gaining by four tenths of a second. Now, if he carries on gaining by that amount, then I don't think he'll catch in time. But, uh, well, fingers crossed. Uh, Adele makes this race a bit more interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's, he's not obligated to, to step aside, like we were saying earlier, with a few other competitors that were, were fighting for their own positions at the time. We know he's still got to come down for the, the pit stop, but uh, he doesn't have an allegiance to anyone here, so he's just out there running his own race and no harm in doing that at all. Rizzo needs to get inventive here if he wants to get through because the gap, as you're saying, Sam, starting to diminish a little bit, uh, 3.2 seconds now. So it has come down marginally for him, although as we uh, look there, actually it's come down four tenths over the last four laps. So um, Davison has been uh, getting some good advantage and while he's got a little bit of clear track in front, that's gonna help him out. He does have a car to contend with. It's a lap down uh, out there also, but I don't think we'll see those guys get in the way. That's Brad Saunders. So. He uh, should step aside as Davison closes in. Rizzo looking at an option through Spoon. This could be his chance. If he can get the run out of here, down the long back straight, he will have a crack at it. Been a scrappy lap here from Tao. He seems to really use every bit of track and a bit more. Um, but he has been very consistent from what I've seen uh, so far. He was stuck behind Huppets, remember, earlier on in the race or maybe just waiting behind Huppert's more like. These guys got very similar aged tyres. I believe 
Rizzo's got a couple of that's older tyres. Oh, he's missed the chicane, Dell, And, uh, well, that's the lead gone. That's a shame to give it up in that fashion. And now he's coming to the pits. Could have gone a bit further there, Dal. I'm almost certain about it. He did take so much fuel at his first pit stop. 46 seconds worth of fuel at his first pit stop. Because his main concern, Dal, isn't batting Rizzo. It's about beating Hagen and Glaspool. And that bit of a mistake going into the chicane may just have cost him both positions, potentially. Dal, who was favourite for third position beforehand, he'll barely be stationed. Come on, go, mate. You need to go, 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 go. But he's going to be behind, I think. And that mistake from Dal, did it cost him fourth position? I think he would have been behind anyway. But that is a shame for Ben Dal. He was ahead of both Huggin and Glaspool before the pit stops occurred. But he has ended up behind these two now. And uh, it's Huggin. He's pulled up a very nice strategy and up into the third position. Yeah, it was a, a little bit of a tricky bobble. So probably needed to come through that lap earlier. To, uh, to mitigate some of that advantage that he was going to lose, but um, still put on a hell of a fight nonetheless to, to press on to where he was. A little further back, and some battles still continuing on with Lee Coogan uh, on the back of Yavin Wood as they work their way through Spoon. And uh, the Ferrari looking pretty good here at the moment. Game 13 spots so far over the course of the run, uh, which has been quite impressive for him. He's been under the radar. We haven't checked these guys out a lot throughout the event but uh, Lee doing a nice solid job here and not long left for him to go to bring it home in a, in a very respectable position for the team. Yeah right yeah we haven't paid too much attention to him as Whitesall. Uh, is that his third pit stop Whitesall or is it his uh like that. I think that's his third pit stop. He, he has got quite a bit of damage on that car yeah because he pit he crashed earlier on didn't he and then uh yeah, oh, he went off at the Degna, but that was ages ago. I swear that was like half an hour ago or something. So, um, yeah, it might take up on our screen. Yeah, that is his third pit stop then. He was stationed for 0.1 seconds. I think that might be a record for the fastest pit stop of all time. Um, I think picked up the faster pair and was gone. Um, so he will come out then, Chris Whitesall, in a very disappointing 25th position, uh, considering that he started in 6th place. A uh, very disappointing day for Chris Whitesall out here. A um, couple of mistakes from himself, a couple of unlucky moments, but uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to um, setting that right, I'm sure, next week. Uh, this is Jarvan Wood ahead of, uh, of Lee uh, Kogan, as we were talking about before. And Kogan on the last lap gained 5 seconds. So a mistake from Jarvan Wood has very much offered this position available for him as we uh, move into the last seven minutes of this 90-minute uh, race. And if he's able to hold position here, he should be in a, uh, a good stead to get it home. This is a, uh, a look at the teammates working their way through. And uh, might have been a little moment here for Yavin as he uh, did have an issue, finds the wall and that's actually dropped him three spots so that put him back in around that spot with uh, Lee Coogan so it could have been a few more spots higher up and uh, hopefully not fighting any damage on that car as uh, just in front of him uh, Fazari and Keeping uh, still continuing their own little fight um, not too far apart from each other. Imbury and Henneker just coming into the pits and they are ahead of these drivers. Uh, been a very good race from Hembury and Henneker, two drivers who I don't believe we've seen in this top split before. We had a few new drivers uh, at Daytona and we had a diminished field, but I think we've also had a few more tonight. Um, plenty of new drivers joining for this uh, season 14, which is fantastic news for the championship. You can see track temperature dropping a bit, uh, which I'm surprised about because it's you know, in the afternoon. Um, so we'll start seeing off at, uh, at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, it's down to 46 degrees now, so a little bit more grip available to the drivers. Um, wow, that's Paul. Storming a lot. Up onto the back of uh, Huggen. These guys pitted for tyres at a similar time, I think. I think they've got similar age tyres, but uh, well, there's no doubt he's the fastest driver right now. Glasspool and Dell uh, is slower than these guys, so it's not as though uh, Huggen's slow necessarily, it's just Glasspool is fast 
and uh, yeah, Glasspool actually matching the race leader as well on that last tour, so it would be a, a great move if he could pull this one off, he just fell short when it came to the pit stop earlier on, Glasspool, remember he was ahead of Huggen earlier on in the race, but had a spin, and that lost him track position, if it weren't for that, he'd definitely be in that third position right now, uh, but he's going to have to get it done on circuit, the gap is half a second at the moment. Yeah, I'm just keeping an eye too out uh, on our lap times for our front running cars. Ross Rizzo, three tenths slower the last time by um, over Danny Davis. And so that gap continuing to fall down to 2.4 seconds at the moment. So uh, potentially Rizzo might also be a little lean on fuel here as well. I'm just trying to save a little bit to get this car home. Uh, but Glasspool and, and Hugger, the, the seven laps difference on the tyres, and especially with the heat that we've got, out here tonight that uh, or today sorry that's not going to be helping him at all so Hagen's going to have that little bit of fresh tyre advantage still to play with and should be able to retain this position with relative ease at the moment personal best half of the race for Ross Rizzo out in the lead that is uh, that's impressive stuff uh, Davidson also lapping uh, very quick albeit Davidson's fastest lap is uh, much faster than Rizzo's fastest lap uh, that's because he uh, took barely any fuel in his first pit stop was lightning quick for about 10 minutes or so uh, was uh, storming in some brilliant lap times but then uh, yeah, had to come to the pits had a bit of fuel and the pace wasn't quite the same so Davidson at least will get the fastest lap of the race but I don't believe there's any bonus points for that uh, but uh, well, it's surprising because uh, Rizzo was, uh, of course, pulled out that two, two and a half second gap right at the start of this race in the first three or four laps of the event. And ever since then, it's, it's been the same. It's really fluctuated from about two seconds to four seconds. Never getting much smaller, never getting much bigger. Two very evening Max drivers battling for the right race win tonight. Uh, Henneker still feeling like he could get past Hembury here. They got Fazari and Woods behind them as well. These guys just came out of the pits, did Hembury and Henneker. And uh, Wood himself quite quick, just behind these guys, and Kogan and Bull actually. Uh, Fazari a little bit slower. So uh, there could be some change. Glasspool is ahead of Huggen. Glasspool up into the podium places. Although he's giving it back up, so there must have been uh, some contact between the two of them. Uh, Glasspool got ahead, but uh, Hagen moves back ahead again. Yeah, we're going to have a look quickly at the replay just to see what unfolded there. And actually a little bit of lap traffic just ahead for these guys to contend with as well. So I don't know whether they've just tripped over them. And actually, yeah, you are right, Sam. A little bit of a moment and uh, Glasspool doing the right thing, just steps aside addresses that uh, we'll wait to see whether there's any adjudication from race control following that one but a uh, bit of a harmless spin there and, and both get underway without too much time loss the uh, the gap out front still continuing to come back um, against Ross Rizzo down to 2.25 seconds now and uh, some lap traffic ahead of Rizzo to contend with as he works his way through Davis and just in the back a shot sweeping up through the S's and uh, he will see that with uh, huge excitement as he knows he's able to close in and this will uh, really mean Russo needs to get on with business here. He's been stuck behind these guys for a little while now. The gap down under two seconds for the first time in a long while and uh, this is only serving to hurt Rizzo more. Here he goes Rizzo, going to have to go down the inside but this is going to compromise him more. Taking a tight line. I mean, Davidson will have to deal with these guys, but now there's a bit of a gap between them. It might be a bit easier to get past. Oh, Rizzo has to get out to the throttle. Oh, he's lost a second then, right there. We've only got one more lap to go, though, and Davidson will be very annoyed, thinking, oh, I've worked so hard to get the gap down to this amount, and I uh, do it in the last couple of moments. Oh, look at the batting right now between these two back markers, that's George and Kramer batting one another. Kramer with a couple of issues so far in this race. And uh, Davidson should be able to slingshot his way past, but uh, well, I think actually Davidson's going to lose just as much time as we are here because uh, they're going to continue batting with one another. Davidson gains a bit in the draft on those two, but now he's got to start getting past. Goes to the inside. Gets past one and gets past the other. So actually, he didn't lose too much time. He only lost about quarters of a second on those two. The gap's down to one and a half seconds. But as we move on to the white flag lap, Rizzo just needs to keep it clean here. 
and he will be in for another race win. He lost eight tenths on that last lap, but uh, he's uh, he's done enough. And, and how often do we have this this story, uh, Daniel? Where uh, we, we have um, oh, it's actually Glasspool's got past Huggen again. Glasspool's up into third place. There he is. Great move from. Uh, James Glasspool, but he's run wide and he's almost given it up straight away, but he, he, he's, he's got it done now. Hagen will dip back into the draft, moving on to their final lap of the race. There's room on the inside, he could go for that one, but he opts to the outside instead. Look at Dowd, he's gone from five seconds to one second behind these drivers, flashing the lights, and it is uh, Hagen who's ahead, but Glasspool holding on down the inside, but Hagen retakes third position. Great battling between these two, and Hagen should have that spot uh, 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 secured now. Well, Dalbert on their tail in fifth place. I was just going to say that don't uh, count out Dal at the back of that because he is riding contention there. Should either of those two have a little misfortune, um, he will pick up the pieces and possibly slide into to what could be a third position as a result. So keep an eye on uh, on the timing screen just to see how that one unfolds. But Rizzo doing everything he needs to to bring this home a couple of lap cars ahead which shouldn't get in the way he goes up towards 130R for the final time but uh, Davison would be ruining what could have been he was right there early on and he uh, made the most of the traffic coming through at the back end but just couldn't comp uh, complete what he needed to do during that middle phase when the pit stops came through yeah and Rizzo is going to take another endurance race where he's uh, really the master of them as he enters the final few corners here at Suzuka, and it's going to be Ross Rizzo, the trick eSports, the car number one, to win the 90 minutes insurance event at Suzuka. Congratulations to him. Davison in second place. Now, here it is the final showdown between Hagen and Glasgow. Glasgow pulled, pulled off a brilliant dive last time out. He's a bit too far behind this time. Oh, he spun it right at the final corner. And it will be Dal who moves up to fourth position. Glasgow will stay ahead of Collins. <laughs> he tried absolutely everything there, did James Glasgow. And uh, Tom Hagen with a very satisfying third place, considering he was down in sixth place uh, after the first half of the race. But then you had the Huppets issue, uh, Glasgow um, and Dal not quite having the best strategy. Hagen with a brilliant third place. Uh, Ferrari on the podium. We've also got Warwick versus Huppets. What could have been for Huppets? Maybe he could have been on the podium if it weren't for his um, two spins and also his uh, speeding penalty. Uh, apologies, this is Warwick on the back of uh, Cooper for the final spot in the top 10 would be a great result for Cooper. Puts this car in the right place into the Casio Triangle. And that is, um, that is Aaron Cooper then to finish in 10th place. Congratulations to him. Ben Henneker still trying to get past uh, Tim Hembury. But that one's not going to turn out. I think the best battle to watch is going to be Ferrari versus Kogan, who's just in the background. BMW versus Ferrari. Can Kogan pull up a good move here? Because he's been about half a second a lap faster for most of the past few laps. Here he goes. He looks to the inside. I have to opt to the outside instead. Might be a run to the line, but the line comes up very quick around this circuit. And uh, it will be Fazari who holds on to 17th place ahead of Kogan. Ball and Barnes round out the top 10. Um, a, a really good race, certainly race of the season, uh, that one, uh, Daniel. And once again, Rizzo, as he always does, he doesn't win these endurance meetings by a big distance, does he? But it's always that combination of of, uh, of strategy and consistency and obviously outright pace which just means that he always has a small upper hand on whoever the nearest challenger is yeah definitely I mean, and and that's all down to that consistency piece and doesn't put a foot wrong um hits the marks consistently and does what he needs to do to get home we thought uh he might have been in a little bit of trouble when we saw him come out of pits and had all those back markers behind obviously a very different strategy to, to the way danny davison ran the race but um Worked out quite nicely for him in the end. The, the traffic wasn't too difficult for him to get through, and um, he did everything he needed to to uh, to get home. I'd be interested to know at the end of the race how much fuel he had left on board the thing, uh, because it wasn't long after he got across the line that he uh, got back into the lane. So uh, might have been very tight there to finish out the event. 
Yes, and uh, that championship lead extending then for Ross Rizzo. Davidson's certainly a worthy challenger this season. But uh, similar to Craig Edwards last season, he, he's just lacking maybe that t that tenth of a second, which uh, could divide the two by the end of the season. So we should be able to bring you through your final results then for this round of the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Series. And it's Ross Rizzo who wins out 1.2 seconds clear of Danny Davidson. Tom Huggan half a minute behind, uh, but a brilliant result for the Mac 1 eSports driver. Ben Dow finishes in fourth place. Oh, so actually there was... Uh, the problem there, so Glasspool lost a lot of time. I wonder maybe when we're going through the interviews in a bit, we could see what happened to Glasspool then, because um, I thought he would got fifth place, but it was down in fourth. Collins ends up in fifth, and that was really good for Collins. He had to done, do that on pace, because he was behind Block for a while, but uh, beats Bales in sixth. Block with a Vega, seventh place. Scott Paul Scythe, been in eighth place for him. Um, yeah, well, Scythe did pit twice. It's late that last pit stop but it works well for him uh james glasspool finishes in ninth best names aaron cooper uh paul warwick uh nathan hubbard steve jansen chris keeping tim himbury uh ben henneker michael fazari lee kogan uh brinton bull chris barnes jarvan wood todd george brock kramer bradley sanders chris weitzel rob harris simon mizomo uh, Alexander Newton, Brinton Hawkins, Michael Schroeder, Adam Simpson, and Rob Bozen. The retirees were Kobe Laszlo and Shane Bowen. Um, so yeah, I wonder if we get that replay up of Davidson on that last lap, because I, I don't really know what happened to him. He had the spin, obviously, but I thought he got back underway fine, but it must have taken him a, a day and a month to uh to get back pointing in the right direction so uh an odd one there but uh yeah while scott is loading that one up we will uh invite a couple of jars up in fact actually we'll, we'll we'll pay attention to uh to this one because uh it was uh an exhilarating final couple of corners glasspool running wide at 130 r spinning into the wall there wasn't too much damage for him he must have had a second issue here because he finished absolutely miles away from these guys here we go oh i wonder um, uh, did he run out of fuel oh why is he coming into the pits oh i think he's got maybe beyond the instant limit he's got 18 incidents and the limit is 17. so glasspool got a drive-through penalty for exceeding the incident limit on the last lap of the race because of that spin and he tried to serve it by going through the pit lane he's still got a pit lane penalty he's still got a post race penalty though because he the, you can't serve it on the last lap so it would have been better if he just got to the line so glasspool absolutely disappointed for him if he hadn't have gone into the pits he would have stayed ahead of lock and forsyth would have lost up to collins and bales regardless uh but would have beaten block and forsyth so um uh, good that he learns that for next time. Um, so, our race winner for tonight, it is Ross Rizzo back on the top step of the podium. Congratulations, Ross. Um, first question, when you came in for that second pit stop, we both thought, me and Daniel both thought that you'd be behind um, Danny because he was so quick after his first pit stop with that low fuel and you didn't see him any faster um, before the pit stop and yet you came out three seconds ahead were you expecting to come out ahead when you made that pit stop just like Matigi, i was not expecting that well i was expecting it to at least be closer um but definitely not the the margin that it was and i, I i'm not sure uh, i think traffic affected both of us but definitely me in the first part of the stops but i i knew that once he had clear air i was going to be in big big trouble because he was laying down some good lap times in the second half of the first stint how, can you explain kind of the um, difference in pace at the start of the race? Because you seem to be pulling about half a second a lap on him for the first five laps. So you got the gap to about two and a half seconds. And then from then on in the race, you were mega evenly matched. Can you explain kind of why he may have dropped back in those early stages? I think I just got more comfortable um, initially. I th obviously, we were very evenly matched, but, you know, getting the jump on him at the start allowed me to focus on my lines rather than the cars behind if they were giving him any uh, any grief. So, yeah, well, it was pretty much just getting into that rhythm in the first couple of laps that made the difference by the looks of it. 
and the uh, closing stages as well when you were behind um, I forget who it was Ben Dow wasn't it behind him uh, were you particularly angsty to get past Ben because if you spent a couple more laps behind him you know maybe Danny would have got involved were, were you particularly anxious in those last few laps uh, it was it was hard to tell initially I wasn't but then I saw it looked like he was driving in the mirrors and that's exactly what I didn't want him to do. I was happy to sit in behind because he had enough pace. But then when he started trying to defend, I, that's when I started to get a little bit nervous. But I kind of thought, well, he's either, um, well, either we, I just got to wait or, um, um, expect, or maybe expect a mistake. And that's exactly what happened. And, you know, I was screaming with relief when I saw him go. He wanted off the track. So, um, yeah, and I remember from Phillip Island, he was putting up a really, um, really hard fight. So I knew I, I knew passing wasn't really going to be an option unless the, an opportunity presented itself. So I was pretty nervous, but I, I had my, my hands tied, really. Well, congratulations, Ross, on uh, on another race victory. Is there, anyone, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, first and foremost, my boys at uh, Trick Esports, we had a crack at the um, AMF and OSR Bathurst 12 hour today and we're looking great for a result and it was it was taken from us late in the race. So just huge effort to, to the boys for, for the race today and uh, and the effort so far this season in AMF um, and to, of course, AMF itself for running this and that joint event with, with OSR, which was, a, I think, a huge success. It was great fun. Um, and to you guys, Apex Racing, for um, the broadcast. Thanks a lot, Ross, and best of luck for uh, next week. Thank you very much, guys. Ross Rizzo there for Chick Esports, your race winner tonight. Uh, we're next going to have an interview with Danny Davison, and he is standing by with Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, Danny, congratulations, mate. Great drive for yourself and the EXG team tonight. Uh, Talk us through your race. Looked like uh, in that opening phase, maybe just struggled a little bit with the, the tyres and, and the pace there. But uh, your pit stop strategy tonight, very different to what we saw from Rizzo. Uh, was that the plan going in or, or did you think you might have um, gone the way you did earlier on? Um, yeah, beginning of the race, I did struggle sort of um, settling down to find some pace. And that's when I dropped behind. But it then um, managed to stabilise the pace, which was um, I was happy but. It was so I was struggling to be consistent just because I don't know about the other cars, but the Porsche was really struggling with um just rear traction with his um, track temp. So I was just sort of struggling to um you know ma maintain the gap and tr I couldn't catch him. But um, during the pits, um, you yeah, had a um, basic strategy um, that I just thought was like the best strategy to choose tires and then fuel later on. So I didn't really um, change it or anything, but um, I was expecting to um lose to um ross um, with strategy anyway usually he's, he's pretty much the, the master of that kind of area but um yeah and sort of surprised to um emerge reasonably close again at, at the end of the um pit stops but um just wasn't quite quick enough ultimately i think yeah well sam and i had you pegged for um a pretty good showing here because we we didn't expect as long a pit stop obviously from ross in the uh, the opening phase and when we saw you come out with the advantage we thought well gee, you you really hit the nail on the head with it and and gone on and then um obviously when the second stops came through we, we saw you behind but in that closing few laps especially the second to last lap there was that huge amount of traffic that uh, both yourself and ross had to contend with the gap shrunk from the, the two and a half seconds down to, to just over one and a half and uh, we thought you might have been in for a good shot were, were you thinking this was your chance to maybe close up and get the final uh, lunge up onto the top step at the end of the race um yeah definitely definitely i was hoping to like um pressure um you know make some pressure in the last um couple laps um when i saw um ross was boxed in um with the traffic and hopefully maybe um maybe he got obstructed or something and i could really have an opportunity but um I managed to get really close, but um, if I had a couple of more laps, maybe. But um, he, he was too consistent. You know, he doesn't make mistakes, so I think I was wishful thinking. But um, yeah, I guess I'm sort of reasonably happy with second. Prefer to win, but yeah, maybe next time. Well, next week we're off to Brazil. Um, should be a pretty good circuit for these cars, especially the Porsche around there. Um, first off, what do you think of that track? Is it one you're fond of? And um, are you looking forward to, to going there for next week? 
Um, not really a huge flat fan of the track, sort of the infield section. It's a bit sort of Mickey Mouse. But, um, you know, hopefully the Porsche's farts there and, you know, have to make the most of it. Hopefully I can finally get a victory. So do my best. Absolutely, mate. Well, all the best going forward uh, next week. Before we let you go, is there anyone you'd like to give uh, a shout-out and a thanks to? Uh, shout-out to Exo Gaming um, team and, yeah, see everybody next uh, next weekend, next race. Well, Cheers. Mate, congratulations again and uh, I hope to catch up with you next week. Later. Danny Davidson, that your P2 finisher. Uh, we're finally going to have a chat with our third place finisher, Tom Huggan. Congratulations, Tom. That looked like a very satisfying P3. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was a really tough battle with James there. Um, yeah, just managed to hold him off in the end with a bit of damage. Absolutely. That, that strategy as well that you pulled up, I think you were running in sixth place early on. Um, Talk us through that strategy. Was that something that you were thinking of on the fly or was that something you were always going to go for? Um, yeah, I just thought about it on the fly, really. Um, I needed some clear air to at least jump one of the positions. So, yeah, just underfield a little bit and gave me some low fuel running with new tyres. It helped a lot. And then those final few laps, I think you hinted at it before with the battle with uh, with James. It, it looks largely fair because James did give you that tap. He redressed it, but then that battle through the chicane and turn one looked uh, looked really good. Yeah, it was really close. We both gave each other, you know, plenty of room, so that was all good. Um, but yeah, nothing wrong with a bit of rubbing, I reckon. Absolutely. And then next up, we've got uh, Interlagos. Uh, you think that the Ferrari is going to be just as strong there as it was here? Yeah, I think it will suit that track really well. Uh, the Ferrari's got great traction coming out of the corners, so it should suit it nicely. <clears throat> awesome. Well, congratulations, uh, Tom, on that podium. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, I'd just like to thank the boys at Mac one for letting me drive for them this season. And yeah, bring on the next race. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having a chat with us, Tom. And uh, yeah, best of luck at Interlagos. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, Tom Huggin there, your P3 finisher. Um, yeah, quick word on Interlagos next time out, Daniel. Um, I think we visited, did we visit that last season? I feel like we did. I think it was one of, it was kind of mid season and it was one of his uh, typical. Uh, easy race uh, race victories um, so but I, I mean I, I'm a fan of certainly watching that circuit the turn 13 going onto the pit straight is, is a massive overtaking opportunity so uh, we'll be uh, we'll be nice to visit there once again yeah definitely it's a, yeah, a really good circuit uh, very much a drivers orientated circuit there as you're saying the uh, the run down that down the front straight to get into pit lane is going to be tricky as always for the guys to to get the brake zones right because you enter right on the racing line there so that'll that'll be a tough one in itself but all through the midsection of the circuit I know when we talk, like as Danny was saying before the, the Porsche maybe not so good in that stop start section could have a few issues getting through there um, next week out but uh, only time will tell to see how that one goes but I think the racing will be we second to none just like we've uh, continued to see so far this season and we're back. To the 45 minute race format uh for next week as well yes yeah, so and back to the uh sprint races and we'll see if we also so can keep up his good form um once again big thanks to virtual racing school to sdk gaming and to apex racing academy as well for helping us out on apex racing tv helping to deliver all of these broadcasts uh we're pumping uh, out so about so about uh, 10 to 20 broadcasts a week at the moment so do subscribe to apex racing tv and you can find i'm sure a racing series that uh that uh, you enjoy of course we broadcast rally cross we broadcast uh porsche cups touring cars uh gts we've got the apex racing league prototype championship with the lmp1s and lmp2 cars coming up uh really everything on Apex Racing TV, we try to cover. So certainly do subscribe to the channel. And if you've enjoyed this video, do leave a like on it. Uh, but for now, from myself, Sam Fitzpatrick, from Daniel Leet, and from Scott Newton, we're going to say goodbye. It is 
two in a row for Ross Vierte. Can he back it up at Interlagos next time out? We'll see you then.